Hi there, this is the VUC. This is where we speak to all kinds of people who make IP communications work. We're at VUC.me on the web. We would like to thank our sponsors who help us make this thing happen every Friday at 12 noon Eastern. Simwood.com has an API that can turn developers into telcos. Go check that out at Simwood.com. Our host at PBX is from OnSip.com, and they have an offer right now for a free SIP address at GetOnSip.com. Check out the WebRTC that's happening there. Our site in 2014 will be hosted at Bluehost. And thanks to Jared and the gang over there for helping us with that. What would the VUC be without ZipDX.com, that full-featured, full-color HD conferencing bridge that you are listening to possibly right now? Thanks to Voxbone.com for the worldwide local rate dialers. Also, join us on Google+. Plus. The community shortcut is VUC.me slash community. Hey, welcome to the VUC. This is uh, Randy speaking, and we're really pleased to uh, be here with you, especially since we had a few problems. Hangouts have uh, some fantastic changes, and one of them apparently took us off the air for a while. But I am uh, very pleased that he's got his headset on. Uh, really happy to welcome uh, Noam Tomshak with us. Hey, Noam. Hey, how's it going? Good to see you, good to hear you, and good to have your lips moving at the same time as you're speaking. Yeah, I had to uh, scramble a little bit to uh, move computers, but uh, we're all ready to go, I think. You're looking good, you're sounding good. You are the COO, Chief Operating Officer, of IOTAM. And I want to tell you, IOTAM was one of our first guests. Uh, a guy named Steve was on in April 2007. <laughs> uh, so that's... Nearly seven years ago, that's about as long as we've been operating. Uh, yeah. I guess a couple of things have changed since then, though. Yes, that that's true. <laughs> um. <laughs> and of course, Alec, Alec was recently on with uh, BlackBerry. But no, I'm, I, I want to get you started. Before we talk about the product that we're going to be talking about, which is Cauliflower Connect, um, let, let's see just a few minutes or a few phrases on how you even got into technology yourself as a human being. At what age did you get interested in this stuff? I mean, you're, you've got an amazing education and background in technology. How, when did that start? What age? Um, I was always really in, uh, interested in math and science, um, but it wasn't really until university that I really got into tech stuff and software. Um, uh, I signed up to do an electrical engineering degree uh, at McGill University, and um, just got really into it from that point forward and uh, really enjoyed it and just sort of fell in love with building technology from hardware to software and then eventually I, I specialized in telecom and uh, uh, signal processing so um, and then I was lucky enough to uh, meet up with Alec when he started IOTAM back in 2004 uh, I was the third employee and uh, you know, we just got along really well, had a, a similar vision on what we wanted to do with software and, and VoIP specifically, and uh, started building cool technology. Now, IOTAM has changed a little bit the focus because, uh, at least as far as I understood recently, because the when Steve was on, for example, there was an amazing idea of hooking Outlook Calendar and stuff like that up I guess you're not so much into that, or maybe that's completely disappeared, or it's a little off focus. From but but the idea that that was um, expressed, which was to have a personal assistant based on your calendar, was actually very impressive to me. Now, where's that? At? Is that completely out of the picture, or are you still doing it? Um, it's not completely out of the picture. It's something. It's a, a project that we we also really enjoyed it was uh, we, we just had issues bringing it to market and uh, for a lot of reasons um, was, Outlook, was Outlook one of those issues? <laughs> um, no not so much um, but uh, really what happened was we, we were building that sort of smart assistant 
that would route your phone calls based on your IM presence and your Outlook calendar and and uh, and we had a, a small initial customer base that really liked it and what they kept telling us was I need these tools to help me solve problems when I'm doing meetings and conference calls that was the number one sort of use case and uh, and so we said okay well well, maybe we need to provide a, a conference calling service and if we did what kinds of problems would we want to solve and how would we use uh, what we've already built to to make that experience uh, really smooth and, and and get people into conference calls in a really smooth way and that's what led to cauliflower um, uh, in uh, 2007 2008 so so um, zooming forward here to 2014 2014, actually, very close yeah. to 2013. Anyway, um, you have in recent months been uh, interested in WebRTC, like I don't know, two or three million people. Yeah. Uh, no, it's it is the latest thing, and you know, there's right. amazing, uh, the ma many amazing things can be done with it. So let's let's now talk then about uh, Cauliflower Connect, and um, I'm going to let you go ahead and. If there are, if you pause once in a while for questions, if there are any or whatever, but um, please absolutely uh, take it over. Okay, so uh, I uh, I made some slides, not too many, just to try and uh, take everyone through sort of our experience of of adding WebRTC to to uh, Cauliflower, and and uh, hopefully there's some insights there that people find interesting and useful. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen. Um, just do the whole thing. So just let me know, uh, Randy, when as long as you can see see the the slide that I've got. There we up. go. We have the slide. Okay, great. So just a, a little bit more background about IOTUM. Um, we actually have a number of brands um, uh, of different call, conference calling services. Um, in, in May, we acquired um, assets from another company, which included freeconference.com, instantconference.com, and, and globalconference.com. But today, mainly, I'm going to talk about Cauliflower because that's the only brand with uh, WebRTC at the moment. Um, when we launched Cauliflower in 2008, um, there were a few things that were really important that we wanted to try and, and do and problems we wanted to solve. We wanted to have pinless entry into a conference call. Um, we wanted to know what, uh, who was in our conference call, who was there, who wasn't, when people drop out. Um, we, we, as a company, hated being in conference calls and always wondering who's that speaking and who's there and, and that type of thing. Um, we wanted to provide a global service. Um, and, and we were very interested in, in the best voice we could deliver, and, and uh, that's uh, in high definition. Um, okay, so I'm going to do a, a demo now. I had to switch computers, so hopefully I've got this all figured out. This is Cauliflower. I've set up this meeting, so when a, a user comes into Cauliflower um, and the meeting is active, they, they get this... Uh, this uh, overlay here. Um, the first thing I'm actually going to do is close this and um, I'm going to start by calling in from the phone. That's your traditional way of calling into a conference call. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to dial, I'm just doing this on my my, um, my iPhone here. I'm just going to dial uh, phone number And then I'm going to type in a uh, seven-digit access code once it picks up. All right, so you can kind of hear the... Uh... Okay, so now you can see this is my PSTN caller. He's in the call. 
Um, I'm just going to turn the volume off, turn speaker off there. Um, so now I've got in with the PSTN. Everyone knows how to do that. That's great. Um, the, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call in using Skype. Um, so we've got a Skype Connect um, uh, connection with Skype, which uses their SIP Connect gateway. Um, so I'm going to call in here. And you'll, you'll notice a lot of the stuff that I'm going to focus on for the sake of this presentation or demo is user experience. Um, because that's really what we're trying to do with Cauliflower is create a compelling user experience. Um, and if Skype will cooperate, hmm, I don't know, maybe it will, maybe it won't. Noam, can one of us call in, do you think, also to, not to break the demo, but maybe... Yeah, to, absolutely. Um, um, if Michael's ready to participate, I mean, I could, but... Uh, um, so, uh, here, um, I can put a... How do you want to call in? Do you want to, do you want to try WebRTC? Well, listen, Michael, are you, you willing to, uh, to be a... Um, can do. Experimental, okay. Okay, I'm going to shut. Well, whatever, whatever you like. A WebRTC would be kind of cool. Yeah, so uh, here, let me go back to the Hangout. Although, wait a minute. Although, actually, I'm not sure whether Skype or WebRTC would be better for the non-disturbing of the, since he's in the Hangout. Right. But I, have I don't know computer. either. I have another computer. Actually, what I can do, I can put a, um, I'm, I'm actually in the Hangout and I'm ZPX, but I can put a USB speakerphone on my laptop and they'll all be separate. Um, how can I, I didn't, I didn't get into the IRC chat. How can I send you a link? Um, you could, there's a chat on the, um, here, and then I can, I, and then I can transfer it over. It's this, I should be yeah, probably. Yeah, I see it. Okay. All right. I'll grab that and put it in IRC. So it's going to ask you to put in a name and an email, and then you can, you can join that way. Okay. So this is, um, um, Michael, I'm going to, I'll PM you this just so that we don't have 20 people. Oops. No, I'm not sorry, I'm going to have to yeah. kill Skype on this computer. Okay. Um, it's not cooperating. So I'm going to kill Skype and, and uh, try with something else. Where is the activity monitor? So for some reason I wasn't able to. Oh, I know why. Okay. Anyway, you got it, Michael. Yeah, when you're doing a demo, changing computers at the last minute. I know. I, <laughs> we all Not, know. So. Yeah. Where's Skype? Oh, come on. Who among us has not done a demo <laughs> and experienced this, though? So, you know, it's definitely... Jerry's going to nod his head and go, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> yeah. So the next thing, uh, while, while Skype sort of uh, recovers, um, I set this up. Uh, so this is Firefox. Um, yeah. Firefox currently is actually using a flash connection just because uh, we're a little bit behind on adding uh, in WebRTC, just uh, mainly because Firefox was slightly behind uh, Chrome in, in yep. adding WebRTC into the accessible screen. So now the thing that I wanted to point out actually with, um, with flash is the user experience is pretty pretty bad. You've got this tiny box. Yep. Um, it's really hard. You don't know where the box is going to show up on the screen. It, it's just, uh, you know, you got to check this tiny little thing. It's it's not clear how you change your devices. And if you ever click remember, you can never change um, your devices again unless you've got a, a degree in, in, in software. It's a so, very obscure... Yeah, it's a very obscure. There is a there's a link you can go to to change all that stuff, but it's indeed it's very very obscure to find it. 
Very poorly done, yeah. That that held technology back two years, probably, that whole thing. Yeah. So, in, fact, in fact, I think if if people are talking so much about what yeah. life is, so it's uh, all been uh, improved. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm just getting the uh, PSTN color back in. I, I hit hang up by accident. Um, uh, so... So, so that's with Flash. The Flash guy is connected. Um, I see uh, Michael. Michael's Michael connected too. Um, I muted everyone in the call just so that I wouldn't cause any problems with mm -hmm. the Hangout. So the PSTI guy's in. The Flash guy's in. Let's see what Skype's saying. Let's see if Skype will work. Skype signing in. You know what? While Skype signing in, I'll I'll show the WebRTC in Cauliflower. So this is the way a user would, would come into a meeting. Um, when they click Call Now using Cauliflower Connect, um, Chrome's going to ask them for permission. Uh, and, and this part of the user experience is, is really important, and we put a lot of effort into it. I'm going to talk more about that uh, a little bit later. Click Allow. Um, we added this device thing here because uh, users can actually change their microphone there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna, now I muted myself there too because I was hearing myself in my headset. <laughs> um, and and the user, you've got a little timer here, and and, uh, and you can hang up. But so this guy, so now this is me, and I'm connected using WebRTC, and and that's very smooth. No no pin code, no code to remember. I click the link from uh, a calendar invitation or from an email invitation. I'm right there. Um, once uh, I let Chrome, you know, allow the website to access the microphone, I won't have to do it again. It's a one-time thing, so the next time's even easier. Um, let's just try Skype. Let's see if it's gonna behave. Hmm. It doesn't well, look like it while is. We're, while we're waiting on this, I just wanted to point out that uh, we have a WebRTC, thanks to uh, Peter Dunkley and Crocodile, we have a WebRTC widget on the site right now where you can call into ZipDX, and I'm showing it as a slide very quickly while uh, Noam is, uh, while, <laughs> while we're waiting for Skype to It's so ironic, but I won't, we won't go there now. It's funny about Skype. But anyway, um, so go to vuc.me. You'll see this little widget that the, you see the orange arrow. You can click on that and call into ZipDX. You can do that right now. It won't disturb anybody, and you'll be on the call. Um, check that out if you can. Back to Noah. <laughs> I don't know if, if Skype may not cooperate, so uh, I'm going to have to skip Skype. It's, uh, not well, we got we got WebRTC, and yeah. uh, we we know what to do. Going to show is that the user experience is also um, not great on Skype. Despite paying Skype for a direct connection between their network and ours, mm -hmm. um, you still have to enter a pin code, and um, and and Skype uh, has made entering digits um, on on their UI even harder than. Than it was uh, before. Um, so, and by the way, do we know the future? My we again. don't really know the future of Skype uh, of Skype Connect uh, from 2014 on. They could pull the rug out at some point, could they not? Oh yeah, I, 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 sorry, you were cutting in and out a bit, but I'm you were sorry. asking me if Skype could uh, Skype could pull the rug under us. Yeah, and, and, not yeah. not just you, but all of us. I have Skype connected yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, that so, could definitely happen. Uh, I'm just going to kill Skype because I think it's uh, causing problems again. Okay, yeah, and I'm gonna, yeah. just going to move on. Yeah, yeah. Right. Skype's not responding. Thanks, thanks. Well, Skype. you know, <laughs> just to mention in passing that I turned Skype on on my laptop, which has nothing to do with the computer I'm talking on now, and it froze. So you know, whatever. <laughs> okay. Don't worry about Skype. Yeah. So I'm just gonna 
disconnect that guy and kill Firefox because I think it might be causing problems with the Hangout. Yeah, Skype. I had to kill Skype, you know, specifically too. It was hung, which on Mac is uh, quite an accomplishment to hang. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Rare. So. Or squid. Uh, can you guys see see my screen? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. We'll go okay. Ahead. So so. With cauliflower, one of the things that I was mentioning was identity and how we identify people. So um, we can use a seven to twenty digit pin code. That's not very advanced. It's a pain in the it's a pain to enter it in and know what it is and and all of that. Um, from from a phone, we also use caller ID, which is a lot better than having to enter a pin code. So you, you put your caller ID into your pro, cauliflower profile, then when you call in, you don't have to enter your pin code from that phone. And, and, that, and that's pretty nice. Um, but you have to take the step of, of typing in your phone number and uh, you know if the caller ID doesn't work, then it, it doesn't work. Um, and, and, it were, and it's harder for a lot, a lot of times in conference calls, you're inviting people you don't necessarily have their phone number, so you can't put it into their contact. Um, so really, the sort of the easiest way to do this, especially now that we have the WebRTC integration, is a unique URL. You send that out, um, send it out to whoever you want, a few clicks, um, and and you're in uh, the conference call in HD, which is which is a great great experience. Um, so how do we how do we how do we add web WebRTC? Um, we use a uh, web telephony platform called Plevo, uh, and that uh, does a lot of the legwork for us. And, and and we use their JavaScript SDK and and built our UI on top of that in the browser. Um, that's going directly into free switch using uh, Opus, which is a great codec, um, works really well. Uh, of course, SIP, and then uh, Cauliflower sits on top at running the application that we were looking at. Um, the user experience is, is always the first thing we try and think about. And it seems like it should be really straightforward with with WebRTC, but it's actually kind of complicated. And it took a lot of work to to make it uh, be as smooth as it is now. And there's still things that we want to do to to improve it. Um, there's lots of states. There's lots of uh, graphical design that needs to go into it. And there's a lot of different error cases. Um, and, and and so we did many iterations. And you could I I put in this state machine over here just to show how uh, complicated uh, it ended up being to to uh, to drive the UI um, and um, I just want to actually go back to the demo just for a minute just to sort of show some of these things um, so if I hang up and then I I get Chrome to reset my permissions which is an interesting hmm. Thing. It's it's uh, not always. You have to kind of like. <laughs> there we go. All right. So when I reload the page, um, when I try and connect this time, if the user, you know, users aren't used to seeing this type of bar. So if they click the X, for example. Well, we've got a problem. They can't connect. So you got to make sure you handle that case. Um, you also have to. Uh, so if then you know you have to get them to come in here and say you know do this the permissions thing again, and then they're going to have to reload the page. And uh, so now I should be able to connect. But then the other thing that users aren't used to is uh, managing their devices. So you get you get people saying they can't be heard, um, or they can hear but they can't be heard, and so we're we're trying with the UI to to make people aware that you know they can change their microphone here if they want to. Um, one thing that that you can't do right now in Chrome with WebRTC is f right from here change your speakers or or the, sorry the output device. Um, which which would be nice from a user experience perspective. It, it just Absolutely. uses your system defaults, um, and and people don't 
know how to how to change that. Um, and 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 that's one area where Skype has done a really good job in terms of the user experience. And I was going to try and demonstrate that, but of course I can't even get it to run. <laughs> so. Um, it's absolutely uh, true, Noam. Uh, it's absolutely true that, uh, and I saw that you had some extra prompts up there showing people, hey, look up here at the top, you know, because there's a message here you need to look at. Yeah. Um, it's true that, uh, you know, I've used Chrome many times in WebRTC, and you see this thing at the top. I myself, and I mean, I'm looking for that stuff, didn't necessarily see it each time. So that's a problem. You guys have put uh, some prompts up there and ways of balloon that shows, you know, look up here and deal with it. But it's true that uh, each browser, it's one of the problems of dealing with browsers. You're doing this from a browser and each browser is going to be different. Not to That's mention right. the fact that Explorer doesn't do any of this. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to get to that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, anyway, I just wanted to underline the fact that this is a huge challenge that uh, you folks have met uh, in your way and that, you know, it's not trivial because the average user, even a geek, I mean, if you, the first time you make a call, you don't know that that's coming. So attention has to be called with it, has to be called to it, and it has to be dealt yeah. with. It's one yeah, of my exactly. Problems. Yeah, and it, and it's new. People aren't used yeah. to their browsers asking them for permission for things. Um, right. it, it's 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 new with uh, WebRTC and some of the eight other HTML5 features like location, which we use. Um, it's a new behavior, and, and I'm going to talk more lit, uh, in a bit. But getting people to change their behavior is uh, is is uh, not easy, even if we're making their lives easier. So mm -hmm. we we tried to put a lot of effort into it. It wasn't easy. Um, we thought it was going to be easy, and it wasn't. So it, it, that's you know um, something people should keep in mind when they're going to add WebRTC. Is there, there's a lot of detail there around the user experience. Um, the other thing that, that uh, so I took this quote from an email somebody sent me. Um, I've gotten in via Chrome after rebooting Chrome. Wow. Um, and, and sometimes you got to do that. It, I, it, I, big kudos to the people to the guys at Chrome and WebRTC at Google. They've done a great job. Um, it's come a long way. It's a lot more stable, but sometimes Chrome needs to be restarted sometimes, or it just sometimes won't Sometimes you have to restart it. Yeah, no, that's a fact. And it was a fact uh, for Hangouts, by the way, for a long time. Yeah. So, um, so uh, now I'm just going to, I wanted to talk a little bit about, it, it's, it's going to end up mainly sort of comparing Skype to WebRTC. Mm -hmm. Um, but even when we started Cauliflower back in 2008, we wanted it to be a global service and we were looking for ways to get people easily into conference calls from their browser. So the first thing we tried was a, a Java applet and uh, that was okay but it didn't work out that well uh, and it was hard to get people to use it and I won't even go into the issues with Java. I think they're well understood, <laughs> uh, especially now. Um, you know, getting people to install it is a real pain. Um, and, and then we moved on to Flash, and Flash was was a lot better, was a lot easier. I don't know what the percentage of users who have Flash installed is, but it's very high. Um, but there's the other user experience issues that um, I uh, explained uh, or I was showing, um, and not to mention complications with codecs and um, TCP versus UDP. If you want to use UDP with Flash, you got to pay Adobe uh, quite a bit of money, and uh, and then if you're using TCP, you've got delay. So. Um, so in 2010, we uh, started using uh, SIP Connect from Skype, and uh, that that was uh, very good. That worked great. Um, uh, and then earlier in 2013, Skype introduced a bug into their client, um, which broke SIP Connect. So we had people. You can see uh, at the beginning of uh, at the beginning of at the beginning of the year, we had almost 12% of the 
of all cauliflower voice traffic coming in over Skype and we were really excited because um, you know that's the direction we think everything's going to move in eventually but uh, so that was pretty exciting then all of a sudden Skype became our number one tech support issue and people associated the issue with our service and, and not even Skype so it was a real customer um, crisis uh, and you can see that traffic dropped um, below down to about uh, two percent over the course of a few months and uh, we were watching WebRTC really closely and wanted to be in on WebRTC but when that happened um, it, it really accelerated our plans because uh, it, Skype just wasn't uh, wasn't going to be an option uh, they did fix the bug uh, months later so it took months for them to fix this bug and then you can sort of see that where the traffic bounces back up slightly and is sort of stabilized around 3% um, the other thing that I wanted to point out um, and I saw this before with WebRTC we're using uh, Opus which is a great codec very resilient to uh, network uh, conditions changing um, HD um, and it's going directly in a free switch so you can have an HD conference call with a WebRTC client some clients maybe have if you have 10 people in your conference call five of them using uh, cauliflower connect they'll have a, an HD call if you have five other callers on the PSTN calling in um, they'll listen to uh, the standard SD voice but your HD caller still get to have an HD call, which is which is great. Um, SIP on the other hand, uh, sorry, Skype on the other hand goes through their private network, which we have no insight into, through their Skype Connect gateway and comes to us in G711. And and Skype has never offered um, Silk or any other HD codecs out of that Skype connect gateway which is a huge disappointment for us um, uh, you know we we were putting a lot of traffic through that gateway and and we thought we might be able to convince them to add uh, an HD codec to it and uh, we were unable to so more kudos to uh, WebRTC um, the other big thing about WebRTC for our application, and, and I actually think this is going to be a, a huge thing in, in general for all applications, is what kind of metadata you can get about a caller who's calling in using a WebRTC client. Um, uh, for us, uh, what you saw in the demo, is that we know who the, who the participant is in the conference call, so we don't need to ask for their PIN code. That's a very simple... Uh, example of the kind of metadata you can get about um, a phone caller um, uh, that you can't get from a closed network like the PSTN um, or Skype for that matter. Um, this, this is from our Google Analytics account so uh, and, and you'll see why I'm showing it. Um, Right now, about 42% of our users have the ability to use WebRTC because they're using Chrome. Um, as soon as we add Firefox, that'll go up quite a bit, but there's still um, over 30% of users on Safari and IE that won't have the opportunity unless we can get them to change browsers, which is uh, a challenge. Let me ask you a question, related question on that, Noam, which is uh, Chrome is doing some kind of desktop apps. I guess that's maybe for the Mac only right right now. Uh, this just came out a couple of days ago. Are you, are you familiar with what I'm talking about? Um, they're they're, they're uh, apps, desktop for, the, for OS X that right. are probably based on the Chrome browser. The point being that uh, rather than because it's a it's an upward battle trying to tell people well you should use Chrome not uh, <laughs> Internet Explorer yeah. or whatever yeah um, and I mean you know in all fairness there are problems because in enterprise sometimes there's a, there's some reason it may be crazy but there's a reason for them having to do that but the but my point is that if this was an app that was be able, able to talk to a WebRTC maybe coming from you or maybe coming from the Chrome people from Google. 
uh, that might make a difference. Whereas asking people to change browsers, hey, you know, I like Opera. What are, what are you talking about? It's great. So that's one of your problems, right? Yeah. No, we actually we plan on uh, taking advantage of uh, the the Chrome apps that that you can and build, and, and I think that's going to be part of our strategy during 2014. So, you know, your options, uh, I think with WebRTC, I think a lot of people are going to do this. The options are going to be use Chrome, Firefox, or download our app from the Chrome store. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, we launched the WebRTC uh, Cauliflower Connect um, feature in August of this year, and the traffic went from zero to about almost two percent in um, in 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 four months, um, which is actually pretty uh, significant um, because uh, it, it it is very hard to get people to try new things. So it looks it doesn't look like a lot. It's a small percentage right now, but it's growing steadily month by month, and I expect it to continue to grow. And especially if we're able to do um, some of the things that you just mentioned, Randy, like provide a Chrome app, that will really help. And if we add it to Firefox, that will help as well. Um, the other thing that I thought was interesting when I prepared this chart was, um, so we've got 2% two, 2 of traffic on WebRTC. 3% on Skype. That means 95% of traffic is coming through the PSTN, which is which is interesting because we've had these features available. Um, in a lot of ways, uh, it's a better user experience than using the phone. But most people are just comfortable using their phone and would rather you know enter a seven to ten digit number on their phone to get into a conference call than using their browser. Um, so there's there's an uphill battle there in in changing the way people uh, look at these technologies and uh, and getting them comfortable using them, um, and uh, we saw that with Skype going into early 2013. We had customers calling us saying, "Oh, I, I'm going to have a hundred people." using Skype getting into my conference call. I want to make sure you can handle it. And we're like, yeah, great, no problem. Um, uh, and the traffic was was really climbing. And then when they introduced that bug and they basically broke the whole experience for a number of months, it just killed it. And I, it, it isn't going back up, I don't think. I think it'll stay level. So it's just interesting how um, uh, technology and Skype built that brand. It got people comfortable with it. Even you know, even my mom's using Skype. But uh, if it doesn't work all the time and it's not as reliable as using the phone, then uh, people aren't going to adopt it as a technology. Well, let's face the facts for Skype. In that uh, Skype. Their biggest thing was that it sounded really good compared to the most crappy uh, VoIP applications and that it went through firewalls. And nowadays, things are working a lot better. And That's think, right. Yeah, I, I think that Skype has a much less of a... The, the advantage is much, is, is much less. There's the Microsoft purchase of Skype. So you know now, with the different things that they're going to be doing in the next year or two, they could easily break their whole grip on that traffic. There's a lot of competition now, too. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm really sensitive, and I'm, I'm glad you're talking about this, because the whole browser thing is we're in a state of change where people are more comfortable typing in a 10-digit or seven, however many digits the code is because they're on their phone. But, you know, the next generation uh, is probably not going to be that phone-centric, I would say. So, Definitely. Meantime, yeah, and in the meantime, there will be um, a lot of progress made on WebRTC, hopefully. Again, we don't know what's going to happen with Explorer, but mostly uh, browsers, decent browsers are going to be doing it. They're going to be doing it better and better. So hopefully that'll, that'll all help you. Yeah, I hope so. I think you're right about that. Um, uh, yeah, I think the last point, just to finish off what you were saying, is that when I think when people hit that screen, um, 
this one here, um, where uh, they have this option of cauliflower connect or Skype. People are familiar with Skype, and so our battle is is getting people when they look at these options to say, "Oh yeah, cauliflower connect." Um, uh, that's that's going to work well, and, and I think Skype uh, still has the upper hand hand in that way. But uh, I'm I'm kind of hoping that that's going to change too. And uh, that's I think that's I'm pretty much done. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's open it up to questions. It's true, James Bodie, who's with us now, and we might want to unmute and whatever. But uh, he did mention this, that you were talking about not using a code. And from what I understood, uh, not entering the code is WebRTC only now, right? Or is it call, is maybe it's caller ID if you're using a phone? It can be caller ID if you're using a phone, but you have to add your, uh, I'll, so I can, well, it doesn't matter. You have to type your phone number into your cauliflower profile because otherwise right. there's there's no way for us to know what it is. Right. No, I mean, you, yeah. you have to you got, have you, go ahead, James. Sorry, have you got any mechanism to stop uh, caller line ID spoofing? Because that's always a, a, a risk with things like this. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, uh, you know, one of the things I didn't go into it because um, uh, it wasn't a, a necessarily something for this, but um, the other thing that we're trying to do at Cauliflower is make things as secure as possible by knowing who's in your conference call and not allowing other people in. So the caller ID. Um, feature is, is uh, can be spoofed by somebody who knows what they're doing with a SIP client, and uh, so it's not as secure as uh, as the WebRTC connection. Um, and that unique URL uh, really means that you know you can't get in unless you've got that 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 sort of uh, credential, and and it, that makes it more uh, more secure than just caller ID. Yeah, great. What about mobile operation? Because the one time where you really, really do want uh, a pinless uh, access into a conference call is when you're mobile, you're driving down the road, as I was about 20 minutes ago. Right. Um, and the uh, last thing you want to be doing is entering a, a seven-digit number or something relatively like that. So how do you deal with a pinless uh, access uh, when you're mobile? Well, Right now, um, you can do that with caller ID. So you type your mobile phone number into Cauliflower, and when you call in from your mobile, it just puts you directly into the correct conference call. Um, uh, and that, that works really well. Um, what we're hoping, and I think everyone's hoping, is that uh, WebRTC becomes ubiquitous on all devices. And, and when that does happen, and it's on a... It'll be on uh, Android mobile soon, I hope. Um, then, uh, then the URL will be just as as easy, and and then you could even do things with an app where it, you know, in the background says, "Oh, you've got your call now. Do you want to join?" You say yes, and 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 you're in. You don't even need to use the phone. So, uh, uh, I'm hoping that that WebRTC makes that easier as well. That is the next frontier, isn't it, guys? Um, Chrome mobile. Chrome, first of all, maybe Android, then iOS, uh, and whatever else is out there that has to be Windows Phone, I don't know. Uh, but that's the last missing link, isn't it? That uh, WebRTC is not built into Chrome, but we've been told that it's coming any second. Yeah. A mobile, I mean, obviously. Yeah, it, it's a problem, isn't it? I mean, we we had assumed uh, this weaving through, and we had assumed that uh, the web. RTC infrastructure, all the bits and pieces within the browsers, was going to be ready by, by about now. And we put WebRTC into our deployment uh, strategy. But you know what? It just hasn't happened yet. So we, we've had to go back and do things with, um, with VoIP applications that we were hoping to do um, with WebRTC. So, any idea? What do, what do you reckon, Noam? How how quickly do you think we're going to get to a state where uh, the majority of users will be able to access things like Cauliflower using WebRTC? <laughs> That's a million-dollar question, isn't it? 
It is. Um, I was at the WebRTC conference in San Jose uh, last month, and you know, everyone's asking this type of question, right? And they're asking about the codec wars on the video side, and they're asking about the browsers, and and uh, the the guys at Google and Firefox kept saying over and over that they they think some big things are going to happen in 2014. So if I had to, uh, if I wanted to be optimistic, I would say at some point during the next year, I think we're going to see some big things happen. But that would be optimistic. Yeah, you know what? It's not Google and Firefox that uh, I'm really worried about. It, it's Microsoft because they're, they're still a, a substantial proportion of the user population still, yeah. as uh, as Randy pointed out, still using the dreaded Internet Exploder. And uh, whilst they're, well, I blame the person who was the project manager when it when they started the whole thing off. You know who that was, don't you? <laughs> You're going to say Alec? It was Alex Saunders, <laughs> wasn't it? He's used to blame for everything. Um, but yeah, the problem was uh, Alec and Microsoft uh, Explorer was so so successful, um, and the kind of le legacy lives on, and so there's so many people still using Internet Explorer that unless we, we have a solution that uses WebRTC on Internet Explorer, then we're going to be challenged, aren't we? Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Um, the, the one thing that, that I learned at, uh, when I was at that WebRTC conference is that um, the guys at Google see people at Apple um, working on WebRTC through commits into um, WebKit or I, I'm not sure through one of the projects they're seeing people at Apple um, uh, working on code for WebRTC so what does that mean I mean who knows but if Apple were to uh, add WebRTC to Safari Microsoft would be the the lone player out, and, and that could that could be a, a linchpin to 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 create some change there. But uh, I mean, I agree with you, um, uh, and and I don't think anyone knows what's going to happen. No, you're right. Anyway, should we change the subject? Can I ask you some different questions? Um, what sort of platform are you doing your conferencing on? Is it commercial or is it open source? So we're using um, uh, the Plevo uh, platform, um, which is uh, which is a commercial and an open source project. Um, and Plevo built their platform on top of FreeSwitch, and uh, and then uh, and, and so so that's what we're using for the the voice conferencing part of things. And we integrate with Plevo using um, their APIs. Both in the browser and um, uh, in the web, um, so so I'd say it's open and commercial. It's uh, I, I mentioned it was in one of the slides. It's uh, you go to uh, plevo.com and, and learn more about it. Okay, that's interesting. And uh, something else you mentioned was uh, you were talking about Opus. Have you managed to get the uh, the variable rate Opus working yet, or are you just running um, standard fixed rate Opus? I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, uh, that d level of detail is is handled by the Plevo SDK that we're using now, and, and uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Okay. Well, I'm, one of the things about Opus is that there's so many different uh, implementations of it, different flavors, right. uh, with different functionality. But just to say, yeah, we support Opus has got to a stage where it's reasonably meaningless. Um, so um, I'm keen. I must come back and, and play a little bit more with cauliflower and see what what, what we can make it do. Um, because um, it's been well, it must be 12 months since I last had a had a play, and I'm okay. guessing that you, yeah. you've evolved the whole product quite a bit since then. Yeah, no, we we've we've done a lot with it. Um, well, I mean, what I would say is observationally, the audio is very good and and works well. Um, I had a call with uh, with, with uh, somebody in Australia, and they were trying to use Skype, and it wouldn't work. And not even Skype with cauliflower; they're just trying to use Skype and talk to somebody 
uh, in North America um, from Australia using Skype. And then we had a, a cauliflower call with that person. They used Cauliflower Connect, and it worked great. Um, so uh, I, I think it's performed really well that way. We haven't had a lot of complaints about audio quality. So uh, I'm not sure you know, if it's doing the variable rate uh, part of Opus or not, but it's performing well at a customer level. That, that, that's what I would say. Yeah, I'm guessing you you're only see the variable rate kicking in when you've got... Uh, uh, a lossy, a noisy circuit where you're taking yeah. packets all the time. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Um, particularly useful in the mobile environment, where, uh, which is where we operate. Right, and and since we you can't use the WebRTC feature on a mobile yet, then um, that that could be why we're not we're not seeing uh, uh, problems with uh, audio. Okay. Well, it's a great yeah. shame that P Peter Dunkley's not here because I know that he and his team have got uh, have been using. Uh, Web RTC on Android for some time now. Okay, cool. So they've got they've got that working um, by hook or by crook. But that's that's Peter and his team of uh, supermen. And there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of exciting things coming down the pike for all that. But this is this is great because um, uh, unlike a lot of things that we're seeing today, cauliflower has been around forever. I mean, it I has. Remember, yeah. I mean, you know, we as I mentioned earlier. Uh, Alec and Dan York, who unfortunately I guess didn't make it, but um, we've we all have known about Michael as well. By the way, uh, Michael and I uh, were guesting on Dan's uh, and Alec's uh, podcast. I think like 2007 or something, right, Michael? Something like that. So I mean, it's not like you guys are the new yeah. kids on the block. That's for sure. Right. So yeah, no, what it's, else? Uh, Is anything we've forgotten here, Noam, that we need to say? Uh, how do people reach you? Obviously, they just go to the site, cauliflower.com or iotum.com. I don't know. Yeah, either either will work. Um, uh, yeah, I'm I'm reachable through the website. I, I can uh, put up my uh, email and Skype name if if people want to contact me that way. Um, I'd love to be able to give you uh, my WebRTC link. Um, I think that's the next thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I don't, I don't have one yet. But that's uh, <laughs> something. That's something that might happen. I, I hope it does. Well, if people go to your site, though, they, they'll easily be able to contact you. You're in all the about things and all that. So it's, yeah. it's easy today. That's a nice thing that has changed today from from 20 years ago. Uh, you don't need to get the telex number of anybody. Go to the website. You'll see Noam. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Well, I'm dating myself. Actually, I Morse code was. I'm more Morse code, you know. Thing. Nice. Did it? Did it? Did it? Did it? Did Anyway, so any any questions before we let Noam go because we were running a little late, and uh, I actually am waiting for a glass of champagne. So <laughs> I, want a, I want one of those too. Yeah, well, my, my domestic slave has gone off without bringing. So me any. Uh, anyway, any, anybody on ZipDX, uh, unmute yourself. Uh, by the way, Bob Bowles says that he was on a New Year's Eve cauliflower Facebook conference in the early days. Uh, yeah. In fact, so was I. I were we that. on the same? Were we on the same one? Yeah. Well, Bob used to work <laughs> with uh, those people on Facebook. I forgot. Oh, he was stealthy. Yeah, well, he's stealthy now. He's on IR. <coughs> Anybody? Final uh, comments or questions? I, I, I've got to lament the fact that everybody used to talk about how great Skype was because it sounded better than the worst phone conversation you've ever, the worst phone quality you've ever had, or most cell phones on GSM. But basically, Skype, you know, has doesn't hold a candle to anything good now on any any of the wideband codecs. So they're using their own codec. They were they were better before, but I don't think they're that hot anymore. Plus all the problems. So Skype has fallen quite a quite a long ways. They yeah. beat Microsoft. Did. They beat Microsoft. Did, yeah. Yeah, they did. So the real people in this uh, in this thing, like Cauliflower, like TruePhone, like all the people who participated in the conference. ZipDX, for that matter, um, you know, Skype are really the new kids, and I think they're going to disappear sooner or later. Microsoft has really managed to do a job. Uh, <laughs> the only thing about Skype is that it's going to uh, connect to Link, and there's a lot of organizations out there that use Link. 
That's a good point. Any nexus with Link at all, or Cauliflower? I mean, probably not, but... No. Because it's all well, out yeah, there, yeah. The problem with Link is it's notoriously difficult to link anything to, to Link. link. <laughs> Can't link to Link. <laughs> well, so, I mean, you just look at, look at the way uh, what Microsoft's done with Skype and they got rid of the desktop APIs, right? I mean, they, they don't really want to integrate, it seems like, with, uh, with third parties. Yeah. That's a big problem. Well, in the absence of anything further, uh, no one else has any questions or anything. I uh, really appreciate you stopping by, Noam, and it was great to hear from you. I'd love it if you would join our community and pop in once in a while because you're the kind of Definitely. person I'm looking for. Uh, so on Google+, Plus, that would be vuc.me slash community for those of you watching. Uh, if there's nothing further from any of you who are participating on either ZipDX or the Hangout, we'll move to our little music outro, and then we'll uh, let everybody go. Anything? Any new, any old business? Any new business? No? Well, then let's, uh, let's do this. Oops. Looks like yeah, we oops. through another VUC session. Thanks for joining us. Join us every week Friday, 12 noon Eastern, at VUC.me. Again, thanks to Simwood.com, Bluehost.com, OnSip.com, ZipDX.com, and Boxbone.com for making it sound like there's another .com boom. See you next week. <laughs>